like and subscribe now if you could pick how do you wanna die in my bed of natural causes at 2500 the day you turn 2500 the day before your 2501st birthday or somewhere in between day before why not in my sleep peaceful like on the opposite end definitely, not from slipping in the shower on the slick floor, lathered and shampooed up from hitting my head on the spigot as I fall to my demise. I read about someone who dies in a shower, after slipping and hitting her head but it wasn't blunt force. Her hair clogged the drain and she drowned. I'm not an emotional person, and reading bad things, or even awful things, normally doesn't faze me, but that story got me. I would like to unheed this post. Like my uncle. He died in his mid-90s, just a few years after his wife died. He was a retired physician. He got a cancer diagnosis that he knew was fatal, but he had some time. So, he spent his remaining months touring the country, seeing his kids, grandkids and great-grandkids, his nephews and nieces, friends, etc. He had a grand old time. Then, pretty much exactly to the timetable he had estimated, he took a bad turn. He summoned his kids who took turns talking with him at his bedside in hospice. At one point, my cousin Chris was with him as he faded in, and out of consciousness, the phone rang. Chris answered and said, no, dad's not conscious right now, this is not a good time. But his dad perked up, who is that? He asked, just some friends of yours, said my cousin, who handed the phone to my uncle. They exchanged a few words. Then the friends arrived 20 minutes later with a couple bottles of amazing vintage wine. My cousin said, no, dad, you're on a lot of painkillers. Alcohol would be a very bad idea. My uncle laughed and said, well, what's the worst that could happen? There was an awkward silence, and then everyone started laughing. The wine was delicious, and he lasted another 48 hours. That's how I want to go out. That sounds like a simply outstanding way to go. A great end to a long life. I bet he was a great man. He sort of reminds me of my own father who was a physician and surgeon. He had some mini strokes, and after each one, dementia appeared and got worse. But he stayed sweet and active, and tried to join in conversations whenever he could. He was always eager to go anywhere. Everyone loved him. At the end, I rushed to the hospital. His eyes were closed. He didn't hear me. I held his large hand. I shouted, Dad. He opened one eye and looked at me with a small smile, for me, his last gift. Then he slipped into a coma, and never opened his eyes again. As long as I held his hand, even as a grown woman, I felt safe. Even though he was in a coma, that hand made me feel safe. He had always loved me, and I forever loved him. He was my father, the man who had supported and cared about me, all my life. He was 95, when I finally let go of his hand. The world was a different place, even now. 14 years later, I think he was waiting to see me just one last time, so he could finally go but never out of my heart. No, never out of my heart. That's such a great story. There's a good article out there called How Doctors Die Something Like That, that talks about how most doctors die at home, while most other people die in a hospital. Your uncle being a doctor made me think about that, and it sounds like your uncle was in that boat. Thanks for sharing this story pain-free. Most of all, I hope to live a relatively long life, but not long enough to need people to change my diapers. No thank you. I have always said that, if someone has to change my diapers, I want them to give me a go to sleep forever pill. I'm a big supporter of legal, well-regulated euthanasia. I think everyone should have the choice in when they go. Nobody should be forced to go through huge amounts of pain and indignity at the end of their lives. It is really cruel in so many cases. Being hit by a meteor. The idea of a space rock that could have traveled millions of miles through space and only to have its journey timed up perfectly with where I'm at the moment would be crazy. I mean, the odds would literally be astronomical the epicenter of your own Tunguska, or just leave a small crater. No, big enough to nuke the world. Don't wanna die alone after all. Right next to the detonation of a nuclear bomb, I watched a video which stated that you would die before the impulses from your sensory nerves were able to travel through your nervous system to register the pain. You would literally die and not know what happened. Pretty terrifying when you think about it. 
that as I'm typing this, I could literally just disappear, and not even know without warning. I'm sure the call out from a nearby operator, Nook inbound, as someone received their 30th kill in a row, would be warning enough tbh. Got, well this doesn't happen too often, I knew you were dead, before you did, you got up here fast, gotta get in line, before everyone else, it'll be real congested, as soon as everyone files in. Blowing up in my sleep, man found dead in his bed after unexpectedly gaining 10 million subscribers on Instagram. Dead in bed is an actual medical condition, which apparently happens to young men in their late teens slash early 20s, when they have a heart attack randomly and just don't wake up again. WTF, quickest and least painful way, and you go out with a bang. Yeah, this is me too, IDC about the being asleep bit, just make it a refined massive explosion. Beirut level or bigger, it'll be hot for a split second, and then nothing, seems like the least painful way, to go to me, so this is the mentality of a suicide bomber. Like my grandma, her heart stopped suddenly while sleeping, must have been painless, changed my mind, I just remembered she died alone, without having anyone around for one week, she had 13 kids, which are my aunts and uncles, so I guess she was used to have people around. Pretty sad. I wondered if your heart stops beating. Are you still alive for a few minutes and eventually die from hypoxia, or whatever it is? If awake, you'll only be so for a few seconds. Death is a process, rather than a single event. It would depend how you're defining being dead. But yes technically, if your heart isn't pumping blood around then your brain isn't getting the bits it needs. Mainly oxygen, and dies from that. When you start asking these questions, you discover there isn't really any specific thing you can call dead. You kind of just have to pick something. And you might pick different things in different context. You can pick a lack of heartbeat. And that's usually a pretty decent thing to pick. Because if you can't get a heart beating, usually they are not coming back. But when people's hearts stop, they typically don't just stop either. They have brief little restarts, flutters, beads, etc. Sometimes they start beating again, without blood flow. The brain starts accumulating damage basically right away, but the damage is basically continuous, so what point do you call dead, when the damage is such, that we can't breathe on their own? There are people who we don't consider dead who can't breathe on their own, and depending on the patient's age and the injury, there are crazy effects of plasticity we don't fully understand, and people can end up compensating for some truly insane brain injuries. The same happened to my grandmother, she had her afternoon coffee and a piece of cake, sat down into her relaxing chair, fell asleep and didn't wake up anymore. The doctor told us he rarely saw someone that went that peaceful, her heart just gently stopped beating. She was 90 years old, and had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's just a few months earlier, and it would have been a lot worse to see her struggle against the disease. So we were grateful to see her go the way she did. An afternoon coffee and a piece of cake is probably a pretty decent last meal too. I want to go out like that. My great aunt had my preferred death. She was in her 90s. She spent the day playing 6 holes of golf with some friends. Came home. Ate a nice dinner. And her heart stopped. While she was sitting in her chair in front of the fireplace. While reading a good book. And sipping a glass of whiskey. I want to be right beside a nuclear bomb as it detonates. You probably die, before you could even think what that metal box thingy is. That's the point. Probably completely painless as it would be quicker, that the brain could process pain signals. Yeah, I mean this would be the quickest and least painful. I would like to spontaneously combust whilst telling ghost stories to a bunch of people around a campfire in a spooky forest. Preferably when I get to the climax of the story, there will be children present. If I'm going out I wanna traumatize a few people along the way. Imagine everyone just starts clapping hand. After you combust, that was a great magic trick. Okay, you can come out of hiding now. Unexpected headshot. One to the back of the head just post nut. Optimal way to go. I'm imagining your family finding you lying on the floor dead, with your dick in your hand and semen all over you. Make sure it's a shotgun or rifle. Pistol shot can be survived way more easily I like. If I survive then I'll be the courier from Fallout New Vegas. Either way it's a win-win. Old age while asleep. I agree but I always say it like one of my favorite jokes. When I die I want to go like my grandpa. 
peacefully in my sleep, not screaming like the passengers in his car. My grandmother legit died this way. She was having mild dementia and in nursing care, so they were monitoring her. They said she got up in the middle of the night, took a wee, walked back towards bed. She paused at the mirror, fixed her hair a bit with a smile, and laid back down. Passed away a short time later. Best way to go by far. Great grandpa for me, lived in his own home, and was still mowing his own lawn at 100 years old. Showed up for a routine physical. Doctor noticed some of his tests were off, so he went to the hospital. Found out he had cancer, and it was spreading quick. No pain, but it was clear he didn't have long. All three of his surviving kids flew in and spent his last few days with him. From the first biasy to his death, was less than a week, in a soft bed, surrounded by loved ones, still lucid and physically capable, holding his daughter's hand as he peacefully drifted off. That is honestly my ideal death, mine is old age. While hallucinating that my old cat is coming to get me to heaven, I loved that cat. People would be nice to hallucinate too, as long as they're friends and family in Nanov, that there's children on my bed stuff that sometimes happens in nursing homes. Excuse me what about children on my bed? Sleep. Yes. Just wake up dead. How the hell you wake up dead? Stolen from my wife. You know that moment, when you are just about to fall asleep, and you do that little kick, and it wakes you up for a brief moment, and in that moment you get to revel briefly in the joy of knowing, that you are about to fall asleep, that's going to be your last thought, and that's a pretty wonderful last thought, all things considered. Riding a rocket into a black hole, that, or facing off against a house full of federal agents with a gun in each hand and a snoot full of coke, I mean, given absolute freedom to choose, I'm gonna go out like a boss, being tossed specifically into a supermassive black hole, would be better, you'd be able to survive the tidal forces due to the size of the black hole only dying from lack of oxygen, before having to experience spaghettification. You'd be able to watch the universe disappear around you as well as having the unique title of only human to have been causally disconnected from the universe while alive. Yes, spaghettification sounds like one of the worst ways to die lol, but once you cross the event horizon border you will be able to look at the back of your own head and see yourself going into infinity because of how light gets, so f it up. It's like a kaleidoscope apparently. My suggestion dose up before launching yourself and enjoy the most mind-bending trip of your life before being spaghettified. I don't know. Spaghettification sounds unpleasant. Spaghettification is only a threat with normal sized black holes. It is totally plausible to survive falling past the event horizon of a supermassive black hole as the differential gravity will not be that bad. In theory you'd then be smashed between the infalling and outflying singularities. The idea being that due to time differentials, you would catch up to things that fell in before you, but things that fell in after you would catch up with you, so you'd still be 100% F'd, unless you fell into your daughter Murph's bookcase, because of love. I'd like to get shot multiple times, and be found moments later by the main character, die in their arms and set them on their vengeance arc, until they have the villain at their mercy, only for them to go, no, this isn't what Asphalt D would have wanted, I mean, it could happen, I like this. The greatest answer to this question ever has to be from Tyrion Lannister, in my own bed, at the age of 80, with a belly full of wine and a girl's mouth around my cock, I have to tell you something dice. MC, in unbearable grief, new who who, f fun fact dies. you know what, I hate that kind of bullsh, if some villain kills me, you can be 100% sure I'd want Mr. Main character to turn that effer into Swiss cheese, or even worse. To get to your killer the MC would have to go through a lot of other enemies, killing everyone that gets in their way. Then when they are about to finally make your killer give up the habit of breathing, he goes no, killing is wrong, I'm not a killer, I'm better than this. Looks up to the heavens, isn't that right? Sensory tomato, like, B, you killed half of the world's population, don't pull that crap on me now. Happy, best answer, happy and in my sleep. Then a snapped and turned into dust. But, like, at a really funny moment. Hey guys you wanna see a magic trick? Disappears into dust. Okay, I give up. How do you do it? At the point of climaxing with your lover. I'm cool oh me i i i Poof. Sheesh. Imagine having to clean out the ash of someone's boner from your properly sticky orifice. I wanna die as a hero saving another person from death. 
that would be at least a worthy death. I want to be the guy he's saving from death. I want to be that dead guy's wife. Wait. I want something good to die for. To make it beautiful to live. I know someone whose life was saved by a stranger who died saving him. Heat death of the universe. At the end of time. A moment will come when just one man remains. Then the moment will pass. Man will be gone. There will be nothing to show. That we were ever here. But stardust. And a bunch of trash. Except for the snail that's after him. Death by Snoo Snoo. First by the most beautiful women in all of Amazonia. Then the large women. Then the petite women. Then the large women again. The spirit is willing. But flesh is bruised and spongy. Knew this would be here. Make us proud. She's built like a steak house, but handles like a bistro. Any possibly quick way, painful or peaceful, so long as it's too quick or too painless for my body to react, I'd like to make a collect call. From most intense prolonged orgasm, coming and going at the same time. Fighting Nestle soldiers in the water wars. So female dolphins have vaginal secretions that make a male dolphin just come over and over and over from this point on. I will call these secretions dolphin psy jelly. Scientists were like holy sh, dude we gotta test this, you know. For science so the scientists collected a sample of said dolphin psy jelly, and had a test primate. They swabbed it on the male primate stick, sat back and watched the show. Now you see, it worked, but it worked a little too well. The monkey straight up had a heart attack, because it used all of its energy into f fine coming. I want to live in a world where this is a commercial product. I want to say you know what, I want to die, and I know what to do about it. I want to live in a world, where I can go into my local grocery store, pick up a bottle of Smucker's Dolphin PSY Jelly, and just f I come myself to death like this. Probably the best and most educational answer I've ever seen on Ask Reddit. Lately point don't care that much, as long as my family gets my insurance money. Isa K truck. Enhances the chances to be in an anime. Without knowing I'm going to die. Remember that guy that skydived from the edge of space. Like that but no parachute. And with a head full of LSD. Yeah no way falling to your inexorable death. And having a very long time to hyperfix it on it could ever trigger a nightmarishly bad trip. Listening to free bad on your way down. I was thinking space oddity. But that free bad solo would be rocking to crash. And burn to a... I'd like to die riding a great white shark through a powerful tornado, thinking maybe F4 or 5, wearing a suit of chainmail and a shield on my back. Our bodies are found somewhere in the central United States. Short clips are circulated around the internet from those chasing the storm cell. Researchers and historians will be stumped as to how the shark and I ended up in such a powerful storm and how we ended up so far from the ocean. In my sleep painless. Morphine overdose, it would be painless, like getting numb and then, falling asleep forever in peace, I nearly died of a heroin overdose, ended up in a coma for 2 weeks, and about a month in hospital from complications, the actual overdose slash fading out was painless from what I recall, waking up was the crap part, riding an actual nuke to its destination, drive, stranger love style, Although the idea of either getting sucked into a black hole or ramming into an object at light speed is also appealing. Monty Python answered this question for me chased off a cliff by topless supermodels wearing helmets and knee pads. I don't care about the pain. I just think about people who will find my body, and I'm hoping it won't be suicide. At one point in time, I would have read this, and been confused by I hope it won't be suicide, because I would have thought, isn't it a choice? But a couple years ago, I have been there, where you feel out of control, and betrayed by your mind. I had thoughts I never realized I'd be capable of having. Basically I read your comment and I thought, I hope you're doing okay, and I wish you well. Peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not yelling and screaming like the passengers in his car. Car crashes are very underestimated fr. They aren't as simple as dying on impact all the time. In my own bed, at the age of 80, with a belly full of wine and a girl's mouth around my cock, I was scrolling looking for this comment. Seems like people forgot got already, the North remembers. When the person I love dies, I want to always be with them. Sh to death. Not being scooped up while scuba divining, and dumped in a forest fire by a fire plane. 
Has this happened before? I want to say this an obscure reference to the opening sequence for the 1999 film Magnolia, but maybe this is something that happens. As someone who has worked around these planes I can tell you it is impossible. The hole is only about the size of a dinner plate. Any story about this happening is a lie. But if you're a scuba diving baby, what else? Boob suffocation.